Steam may have thousands of games available, but how many of them are actually good? My name is Groudon, and this is Steam Sequence, a series where I complete Steam games in alphabetical order to hopefully uncover some hidden gems. And let's see if today's game, Aki Robots, is one of them. Time for a quick overview. Aki Robots released in 2020 and was developed by Flat Ponies, and this is currently their only game on Steam. From the description and the trailer, we can see that this is a 2D puzzle platformer game, and the art and sound design appear to be excellent. The chiptune style music fits the aesthetic really well, and graphically everything looks very clean and consistent. While it only has 15 reviews, it has an overall positive rating. It does cost $8.99 though, which makes it one of the most expensive games we've reviewed so far. The other being Wild Russia, which was almost $23, but was also thankfully completed in less than two hours and promptly refunded. Let's hope that this game isn't a repeat of that experience. Right out of the gate, I'm pleasantly surprised. I think I've just played so many bad games at this point that I've started to expect a bait and switch, and when I encounter a competent game, I'm a little shocked. That said, I've noticed a few things that make me suspicious. Overly large buttons on the screen, limited graphical options, and most tellingly, an option for on-screen cursor controls. It turns out that this game is also available in the Apple and Google Play Store, so it has been designed with touchscreen controls in mind and then ported to Steam. Thankfully though, this is a really solid port. So let's look at the game itself. Levels in Aki Robots consist of a single screen, and the goal is to get a robot to touch the socket, which acts as a goal. Movement is bound to WASD or the arrow keys, depending on your preference. The twist of the game is that all robots are moved at the same time, which leads to some creative puzzle solving in later levels. And this is where Aki Robots really shines. There are 100 levels in total, split across 7 worlds. Each world introduces new mechanics, which gives the player enough time to learn how to use something new, get used to it, have it used in creative ways, and then move on to a new mechanic before it gets too boring. World 1 starts with a basic pink robot that follows your controls normally, and then introduces the blue robot that moves the opposite way. It also introduces the snake, a robot that can extend and retract its body, and is useful for bridging gaps, reaching higher levels, or pushing objects. World 2 introduces the trash blocks that can be pushed around by robots and are used to fill in holes or build towers to reach high places. World 3 introduces the massive green trash block that takes up a 2x2 space, but otherwise functions the same as the normal trash block. World 4 gives us the skull and the bee, floating platforms that are controlled at the same time as the other robots. This makes it easier to get around, but getting on and off the platforms can be tricky. World 5 introduces the flying version of the robot, which appears in both its pink and blue variants. The blue robot has the left and right controls reversed, but up and down are still the same. World 6 gives us the snail, a massive robot that only moves on every second or third input. And lastly, World 7 introduces the froggy, crumbling block that falls apart after being used too many times. In total, that's 11 mechanics at play, and later levels use these in some wonderfully creative and challenging ways. Thankfully, the challenge is fair. The developers have minimized frustration by including the ability to undo moves or easily restart the entire level, and I love that they included this. So just how complex do some of these later levels get? Well, how about needing to keep four snail robots stacked to move to the far end of the screen? What about using flying robots to guide a trash block to the goal and keep a snake out of the way? How about... Actually, some of these are quite hard to describe, so here's a quick look at some of my favourite levels that I played through. I won't show much more than this because I don't want to spoil the solutions for anyone that is thinking about trying this game out. There's a couple of things left that need to be discussed though. 
Firstly, in addition to all 100 levels, each level also has a movement challenge that is set by the developers. Basically, this is a super tough challenge mode that requires you to beat each level in the minimum number of moves. So if you're a perfectionist, there is something here for you. And if 100 levels don't sound like enough, there is also a Super Mario Maker style level editor that allows you to create and share your own custom levels. I did have a quick look at this and it's very intuitive. It only took me a few minutes to create my own level and I like that you need to complete it yourself before it can be saved. Now the icing on the cake is the background music. It suits the theme of the game perfectly and it varies from world to world but still keeps the same core elements. It's always present but never intrusive. You don't want your thoughts derailed by music in a puzzle game and Aki Robots treads the line carefully. Just interesting enough to be appreciated but not so complex as to be distracting. I also appreciate that not every level needs to be beaten to advance to the next world. In fact, the final level is actually level 88, the first level of world 7. The credits are shown on the right side of the screen and beating this one unlocks the bonus levels in previous worlds. To Aki Robot's credit, while I could have stopped playing at this level, I was enjoying the puzzles enough that I went back and completed all 100 levels. I think that speaks volumes about a game when you want to continue playing even after the credits roll. In case it wasn't already obvious, I really enjoyed my time with Aki Robots. I also recognise that I likely would never have played this if it weren't for my Steam Sequence project, so I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to do so. This is what the series is meant to be about after all, finding the little known games that are actually great. If you're a fan of puzzle games, then Aki Robots is an easy one to recommend. If you hate puzzle games, then steer clear of this one. No game will suit every single person's preferences, and that's okay. Aki Robots focuses on one thing and does that one thing incredibly well. It can feel a bit slow at the start and a bit simplistic, but that's only until it has a chance to introduce the later mechanics. And for that reason, I give Aki Robots a snail robot out of 10. Because it's adorable, it tries its best, and it gets there in the end. Good job, Snailbot. As always, thanks for watching! If you're enjoying the content, make sure to subscribe to see future videos. If you're already subscribed, then thank you! Why not hit that like button to help this video get picked up by the YouTube algorithm gods? And until next time, take care.